Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kazuhito Matsuda, and I work at Cybos. Today, I'm going to talk about a CSI driver for Kubernetes, a capacity area dynamic volume provisioning for LVM local storage. And my co-presenter is Sato Takeuchi, uh, also an engineer at Cybos. Uh, Japanese cloud service provider of Group Rio. We are now reconstructing our infrastructure into a Kubernetes-based cluster on the on-premises data center, including today's content about utilizing local storage. Here is the agenda. Um, first, I'm going to talk about existing ways to use local storage in Kubernetes. Then I'll talk about the motivation and challenges of dynamic provisioning. After that, I'll introduce our novel CSI plugin named Topo LBM and give a demonstration. So, why would we use local storage? In general, uh, persistent storage in Kubernetes relies on remote storage systems such as Ceph. It also includes storage services uh, provided by cloud service providers such as Amazon EBS. However, uh, the benefits of using local storage still exist. Uh, which are I.O. performance and reasonable cost. Of course, uh, using local storage in Kubernetes has some disadvantages, such as topology limitation and redundancy problems. But uh, it is a reasonable choice for I.O. bound applications. So if you have I.O. bound workloads, such as MySQL, Elasticsearch, Luke, and so on. Also have high performance work of storage. Uh, maybe our presentation might be helpful content. First, I'll show existing ways to use local storage in Kubernetes. The most popular and simple way is host path maybe which you, uh, which you may already know. In host pass, the Kubernetes mounts the host file system pass to a pass in the pod. However, uh, host pass has, was not designed to be used for stateful applications. They do not retain essential attributes such as capacity and bound status and so on. Of course, uh, it also does not, uh, does not support dynamic provisioning. It's mainly used for applications that have control privileges for the host OS and or collect information about the host. Anyway, host paths should not be used for maintaining the application state or data. A practical method was presented at Kubernetes 1.14, and that is local persistent volume. This feature can have topology area pod scheduling uh, with persistent volume create. Once persistent volumes are created manually. In other words, users must prepare persistent volumes beforehand. Of course, we can utilize some automation tools. However, uh, that is outside of the persistent volume life cycle managed by Kubernetes. Therefore, it cannot be dynamic provisioning. Without dynamic provisioning supported by Kubernetes, a cluster admin is likely to meet a challenge like this. Uh, one developer says, hey, I want to run an Elasticsearch instance. 
So please give me persistent volume, but I cannot say how it will consume disk space. So 100 gigabytes for now, please. Another developer says, uh, please give me, give me a persistent volume for my SQL. But service growth rate cannot be predicted, but roughly 500 gigabytes. Another one says, and the service has gone over, so I release the volume. And in Kubernetes and in the pod life cycle, is very rapid. So life cycle of persistent volume is also quick. Therefore, we can easily imagine that the operation and management of persistent volumes must be collapsed in terms of uh, scalability. So we need uh, automated management. Uh, in other words, uh, we need a dynamic provisioner for local storage. Dynamic provisioning is defined in the Kubernetes document, and that is the dynamic provisioning feature eliminates the need for cluster administrators to pre provision storage. Instead, uh, it automatically, automatically provisions storage when it is requested by users. It provides agility, scalability, and accuracy for the operation and management of storage. Essential features are mechanisms for dynamic volume allocation and resizing because we cannot determine physical volume sizes for services beforehand. To realize dynamic allocation, uh, we have to determine where required persistent volumes can be located. And considering the future expansion of volume, a node that has more free disk space is preferable to others. Both of them require capacity aware volume scheduling. So capacity awareness is key to dynamic provisioning. To achieve capacity aware volume scheduling, um, we need to follow two steps. The first, cons the first uh, consists of gathering capacity metrics from nodes. Then the scheduler filters and scores the nodes using capacity metrics and the required volume size. The process is depicted on this slide. Uh, first, volume provisioner gathers capacity metrics. When the pod controller requests pod scheduling, the controller should pass the requested volume size to the scheduler. To determine where to locate the pod, the scheduler filters and scores all nodes based on the capacity metrics and the requested volume size. After that, patient volume controller will request a volume from the provisioner. However, the current Kubernetes does not support capacity awareness. Uh, although the clip uh, which proposes how to expose storage capacity to Kubernetes, uh, it was posted and merged, but uh, port scheduling with storage capacity is ongoing. So ahead of it, uh, We've implemented a capacity area boring provisioner for local storage named Topo LVM. Simply stated, uh, we made it, uh, it uh, as a CSI plugin. Topo LVM, uh, of course, has a capacity area dynamic provisioning feature and it also supports low block volume as persistent volume 
which improves the performance of applications that you can use block devices directly. Online resizing is also supported. Let me show you the details of Topo LVM. Here is a diagram of Topo LVM. Uh, in this figure, the blue square boxes are Topo LVM components, and the round cut boxes indicate the API resources. Scale and API means Kube Scheduler and Kube API Server, respectively. <coughs> the uh, external provisioner is the sidecar container uh, that watches persistent volume claims and calls the CSI drivers API to create and bind persistent volumes. Let's check out the dynamic provisioning sequence by Topo LVM. Uh, first, uh, the Topo LVM node running at each server each server and it annotates uh, its own server's uh, storage capacity to the corresponding node resources. Uh, when a pod with PVC is created, the Kube scheduler will receive a scheduling request, then pass it to the Topo LVM scheduler. And the Topo LVM scheduler filters and scores all nodes based on the annotation of capacity metrics. Once the location of the pod is determined, the external provisioner calls the Topo LVM controller's API with the topology key, that is a node name. The Topo LVM controller creates a custom resources uh, resource named top logical volume uh, with the node name and the requested volume size. Each Topo LVM nodes, uh, each Topo LVM node uh, watches this custom resource and if it is for its own node, uh, the Topo LVM node will create a volume and update the status of the custom resource. The Topo LVM controller, which uh, is watching the status of the custom resource, when detecting this update, the Topo LVM controller returns the volume information as the return value of the API call. Therefore, the external provisioner can create persistent volume with the volume information. Okay, uh, I'll give an additional explanation for the capacity area volume scheduling. As I mentioned uh, briefly, each Topo LVM node uh, gathers capacity of its own nodes, node storage. And this metric is written to the node annotation uh, this way uh, with a specific annotation key, uh, Topo LVM cybers.com capacity. Um, Topo LVM has the admission mutating webhook. Uh, it's for modifying pod spec according to its requesting volume size, uh, like this. It ensures uh, that the Topo LVM scheduler can get the requested volume size via the Kube scheduler. The Kube Scheduler is implemented as an extension of Kube Scheduler, uh, which means the Kube Scheduler calls the webhook of Topo LVM Scheduler uh, with the pod manifest. According to the previous mentioned uh, information, uh, the Topo LVM Scheduler can judge which node must be filtered and can calculate uh, scores of nodes to determine where to locate the pod. 
the scoring expression is here. Uh, that is the logarithm to base two uh, is very simple. I'm also going to touch on the limitations of topo LBM. Although you can get some redundancies uh, using other techniques such as RAID1, but it does not provide any node level redundancies uh, because the uh, volume uh, just located on the local disks. So the volumes supplied by topo LVM uh, should be used by applications that can be redundant themselves. For example, uh, DBMS uh, databases and distributed storage systems uh, such as MySQL and Ceph. Okay, uh, next we'll give a demonstration of Topo LVM. Uh, please settle. Okay. okay. I'll have some demos of Topo LVM. I'll introduce the following three features uh, that Kazuhito mentioned in this presentation. Here is the software and hardware configuration in this demo. There are two worker nodes, KindWorker and KindWorker2. KindWorker has one volume group named MyBridge1 that has 18 gigabytes free space. And KindWorker2 also have 18 gigabytes free space volume group, MyBridge2. Both MyBG1 and MyBG2 are managed by Topo LVM. I'll use uh, three terminals in this presentation. The first one is uh, operation terminal uh, to issue Kube control command. For example, Kube control get node show three nodes. The first one is control plane. And the second one and third one is worker nodes, kind worker and kind worker two. And the second terminal is connected to kind worker node. So we can get the information on my VG1 from here. My VG1's free space is under 18 gigabytes. And the last terminal is connected to kind worker two. And the we can get the mybg 2s information. Its free space is under 18 gigabytes. So uh, since both uh, mybg one and mybg 2 uh, managed by Topo LVM, we can get the uh, free space of mybg one and mybg 2 from uh, the G's uh, nodes, uh, node resource. Copy control get node kind worker hyphen o yamo okay uh, please see the this annotation topo lvm .com capacity this annotation means uh, uh, free space of uh, my bridge one so it's about 18 gigabytes okay the next one is kube uh, kind worker 2. Kind worker 2 also has this annotation and the value is same as uh, my bridge ones. Uh, it's uh, corresponding to the my bridge 2's uh, free space and it's also uh, under 18 gigabytes. Okay. So first demo is about dynamic volume provisioning. So let's schedule a port named nginx1. Uh, this port use, uh, uses a uh, one gigabyte volume. Press port one. Okay. My persistent volume claim uh, topo pvc1 request one gigabyte from topo LVM. And the nginx1 port uh, consumes topo pvc1 and is mounted in bar www html okay uh, please note that there is no persistent volume resource 
there are only persistent volume claim and port results. And of course, Kube control get PV show nothing. There, are, there is no persistent volume in the default namespace. Okay, so Kube control apply F port one. Okay, let's apply it. Okay. So the expected, re expected result here is that uh, persistent volume is created dynamically. Okay. So let's confirm the Kube control get port. Okay, Nginx1 uh, is running. And uh, Kube control get PVC. Okay, topo PVC1 is created and bound to PVC blah, 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 blah. It's uh, 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 persistent volume created dynamically by topo LBM. Okay, persistent volume. So we found that uh, uh, persistent volume is created dynamically. So we found a dynamic volume provisioning in topo LBM worked fine. And uh, as a side note, uh, we can get uh, this volume is correspond to the uh, logical volume in my VG1. So uh, first, uh, VG display shows the uh, uh, free space is decreased uh, to uh, uh, changed from 18 gigabytes to 70 gigabytes. And the uh, LV display show Okay, this volume, this logical volume is corresponding to the uh, persistent volume and the persistent volume claim, new persistent volume. Okay. So, of course, the Kube control get node kind worker, its uh, capacity is uh, changed. It, it was uh, about 18 gigabytes. Now it's it's uh, about uh, 17 gigabytes. Okay. So the next uh, next demo is about capacity aware scheduling. Uh, as a present uh, preparation, uh, let's exhaust uh, kind worker tools volume group. Now, uh, kind worker tools volume group my VG2 has 18 gigabytes free space. To exhaust this volume, uh, let's schedule a port named Nginx2 to KindWorker2. It uses a 17 gigabytes volume. Press port 2. Okay, top of BBC2, it has 17 gigabytes and consumed by Nginx2 port. And uh, this Nginx2 port is bound to kind worker two. Okay, let's apply it. Apply F port two. Okay, copy control get port. It's under creating. Please wait for a while. So the uh, it, the top of PVC two and the corresponding uh, volume is under creating. Okay, Nginx2 is now running. Kube control get PV, uh, PV. okay, 70 gigabytes. It's, it's, uh, uh, so the get node kind worker two. Okay, it's the my bridge tools capacity is now under one gigabyte. Of course, we can find it from kind worker two. Okay, my G, my bridge tools free space is under uh, one gigabyte. Okay, so now kind worker tools capacity is under one gigabyte. So pre, let's schedule many ports. Uh, in this case, Nginx three, four, five, six, seven, five port. Uh, these ports, all these ports use a uh, one gigabyte volume. Uh, please note that the 
kind of worker tools, uh, my VG tool is uh, has only uh, has uh, uh, only under uh, one gigabyte free space. So uh, it it doesn't uh, it doesn't have enough space to create one gigabyte volume. Sorry. Less many ports. Okay. Top of PVC three is uh, request one gigabyte and uh, consumed by Nginx three, and uh, it's same as four, five, six, seven. Okay. Let's apply. Google control apply many ports. Okay. So the expected result here is all ports are scheduled to kind worker. Okay, it's because Nginx2, uh, no, uh, my VG2 my doesn't have enough space. Okay. So, copy control, get port. Okay, it's all it's running. And the uh, engine X327, uh, all, all these ports are running and in running in kind worker. It means that uh, uh, these ports are not evenly spread in the uh, spread over kind worker and kind worker too. It's because Topo LVM, no, uh, kind worker too doesn't have enough space. Okay, so then uh, Topo LVM uh, select a kind worker uh, as a, a node to be scheduled. Okay. So we confirm all ports are scheduled to kind worker. Without uh, Topo LVM, uh, some, uh, some ports uh, will be uh, scheduled to uh, scheduled to kind of worker too, but uh, it failed to start because uh, the local its local volume is uh, cannot be uh, created. Okay, so we confirmed that uh, capacity aware scheduling in Topo LVM worked fine. So the next and the last demo is about online volume resizing. So it's very simple, just, uh, just expand Nginx1's volume to two gigabytes. Nginx1's volume is uh, uh, topo pvc1. Topo pvc1 is Kube control, Kube control get uh, pvc topo pvc1. Yes, it has one gigabytes. And uh, the corresponding file system is mounted in Nginx1 TF. Okay, it's about uh, www.html. Uh, HTML. Its size is about one gigabyte. Okay. So to expand uh, PVC, it's very simple. Edit, just edit PVC, topo PVC1. The current requested volume size is one gigabyte. So uh, what should I do is uh, just change this value to two. So, okay, so the expanding uh, job is kicked. So, Google control get PVC topo PVC one. Yes, not it's not changed yet. Uh, it's under expanding. So, uh, more precise precisely, uh, the the volume uh, logical volume corresponding to topo PVC one is now under expanding. And uh, after that, uh, Topo LVM uh, expands the uh, file system inside this uh, logical volume. 
So is it done? Okay, it's, uh, it's changed to two gigabytes, it's expanded. So as a side note, uh, it's event is get, can be get from uh, Kube control, describe, pbc, topo, pbc1. Okay, the, when uh, I changed, uh, I edited the pbc resource, this event is kicked external expanded. And uh, this means uh, resizing volume. And the resize file system uh, started to resize file system and file system resize successful, it's done. So let's see the, this file, in, file system inside, inside uh, Nginx1, df, uh, www.html, it's expanded to two gigabytes, okay? So expected result is top of PVC one is result resized. Okay, the second one is the corresponding file system is resized. Both are checked. So uh, we can find the uh, online volume resizing feature uh, of top of LVM worked fine. So the demo is done. So here is the takeaways of the presentation. Uh, Topo LVM is a local storage dynamic provisioner based on LVM. And uh, it enables capacity aware port scheduling based on local storage. And we cybers continue to develop Topo LVM. And uh, Topo LVM is not a toy program. Uh, our target uh, Topo LVM's target is uh, to use production use. So here is the uh, community and links of Topo LVM. Uh, please join us. Thank you very much. That's all.